at Quorumdale Farm. We are a year two Oklahoma flower farm selling retail bouquets from our roadside stand. In the last videos that we've done where we've done more information about our flower stand, making the bouquets, stocking the stand, selling out, in the comments we keep getting requests to do a more tutorial, technical, how we make our bouquets, the harvesting, the process, because I'm making about 50 bouquets in two hours, once I harvest, but like I have the buckets in front of me, I'm making 50 wrapped bouquets in two hours, which is on the faster end, that's about 25 an hour. And so I think there's interest in my process, how I speed it up, how I do that to be really efficient with efficiency increasing productivity. And so it's the month of August, and in August we are closed we take a break we prepare for the fall so we just planted like a thousand plus sunflowers so not really taking a break but we're taking a break from selling at the stand the flowers are tired it's our hottest month I think it's going to be hundred and five today I'm gonna to take three buckets out to the field and do my standard what what a harvest would look like and then they'll rest and I'll come back and show you the process that I make the bouquets and talk about it a little more slowly than I would on an actual bouquet making day where I'm trying to go as fast as possible. So hopefully this is a helpful video. It is sunrise. We have our stand open on Saturday mornings. And so my schedule is I harvest about half my buckets Friday morning half my buckets Friday night, they rest overnight, and then I make the bouquets sad early Saturday morning. The reason I split it up is not because I want to, it's just a time constraint. Sun rises right now at about 6.30 in the morning, and I only have about two hours to get things done until my kids need breakfast and they're all fully awake and stuff. So I tend to try to do four or five buckets in the morning, then I can do four or five buckets after dinner in the evening and get the total like eight to 10 that I want each time to make about 50 bouquets is what eight to 10 buckets give me about 50 bouquets in the way that we make them I figured out. So that's why I split it up. If you have 6.30 in the morning until 10.30, then just get it done in the morning and then the buckets can all rest together and you don't have to split it up, but splitting up's the way my schedule has to do it. So if you're trying to increase your efficiency, which again, increases your profit, you really need to focus on how long things take you. So it would be a good idea next time you go out to harvest and do a lot of these tasks is to set a timer and see how long things are taking and see if you can beat it. See if you can get better, see if you can get faster and maybe think about what might be slowing you down. So I just harvested a full bucket of marigolds. I harvested this full bucket over 20 stems. This took me four minutes to harvest this. So knowing it took me four minutes is really helpful. It's helpful when I plan my morning of how many buckets I need to get done, how much time I have to do things, and it keeps me focused. I mean, as a flower farmer, everything is beautiful, and you can get kind of lost in it. You can kind of be like over assessing stems, letting your mind wander, daydreaming sort of thing, and that can really slow you down. But if you're focused, you get in, you get those stems, you get going, you're gonna have more time for things and you're gonna end up being more profitable. You're gonna get more stems, you're gonna be able to make more bouquets and you're not gonna be thinking, oh my gosh, it takes me four or five hours to prepare for market. It'll be, I can get all the flowers I need in one hour. That's a big deal. So try timing yourself and think about like, where am I wasting time? What is slowing me down? And try to think about ways to speed it up. All right, I just got my second bucket done. It's all zinnias, and it took me about 15 minutes, which is larger than the marigold, longer than the marigolds, which makes sense. The marigolds are bulkier, so not as many fit in a bucket, but I've got a lot of zinnias here, and they look beautiful. So last up for this demonstration video, I need to get basil and celosia. Those are the only fillers we grow on the farm. So these bouquets will be marigold, zinnias, basil, and celosia. Typically, if I had them, I would also include a stem or two of sunflowers, but mine are just cycled off right now because again, we take August off. So that would be the additional thing I would normally harvest. And sunflowers go really fast, but no sunflowers today. All right, I got my sprigs of basil. This is cinnamon basil. I probably got about 30 stems. I'm trying to decide if I want to get 
celosia because these can be pretty focal flower focused bouquets I'll be able to make. So the basil took me about maybe five minutes, six minutes. So all in out here, it took me 30 minutes to harvest three full buckets. With the amount of stems I'll put in my bouquets, which I'll show you, these three buckets, I'm gonna guess, will get me about 10, maybe a little less bouquets. And so if that's your goal, you're starting out flower farmer or just selling from a little stand this year, three buckets, about 10 bouquets. We'll see if I'm right when I actually go to make the bouquets. I'm trying to get better at estimating. But it was 30 minutes. It should not be, I'm pulling the bucket. I'm out of shape, how sad is that? It should not take you two hours to harvest three buckets. You can do better, I promise. So now I've got the buckets, the flowers inside our flower cottage. Our flower cottage is just a temperature controlled space that I use to arrange, store our flowers, start our seeds, arrange all of our bouquets, all of that stuff. It is 78 in here, because again, I said it was gonna be a high of 105, and I don't wanna pay a gazillion dollars in AC costs. So we set it at 78, which honestly, it's fine. The unit is right there, keeps the flowers nice and cool. Flowers need to rehydrate minimum a couple hours, ideally a lot longer than that. I mentioned I'll be arranging these Saturday morning, so they're just gonna get a full day of resting inside a cooler space, drinking up lots of water, so they don't wilt when they go in bouquets. And a big culprit of wilting is basil. So I like to give them a really, really long hydration time. But that was it, about 30 minutes or so to get these buckets, they'll sit. I'll wake up early in the morning and I will come back here and I'll show you exactly my process for making the bouquets and how I can make 50 in an hour to be the most efficient with our time and make the most money. Good morning, it's Saturday morning. So like I said, we cut all the flowers yesterday. I let them rest. We open our stand on Saturday mornings. And so my schedule again is Friday morning, Friday night harvest, Saturday morning arrange. If you sell at farmer's markets or this schedule just doesn't work for you, then you might do Friday morning harvest, Friday evening arrange, and then you're ready to go on Saturday. Normally I would make sure on Friday night to set up the space and so have my wrapping station ready to go with all the supplies, have my snips in here, make sure I have everything. Forgot to do that, so I need to make more wraps. We use craft paper from Amazon and we cut them ourselves. You can pay for pre-cut sheets. Ours are 18 inches and then we cut them to 18 inches. So they're 18 by 18. You can buy pre-cut wraps. I haven't, I mean, it's just more of an expense. And one of our goals in being profitable in year two is to cut down our expenses. Yes, there's a little bit of an increased labor, but between Eric and I, he usually helps me. It's usually his task on Friday night to just come out here and cut me my 50 sheets. It takes him maybe 15, 20 minutes. So that's worth the savings for us right now than paying for the pre-cut sheets. But I could see us also getting to a volume at some point that we just want to have our stack of pre-cuts. But I need to make these and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so on my long table here, we use... When we did the flooring for the cottage, we had an extra panel. And so we use this to slice on because you can't really slice through the panel. I put my paper up here. I said we did 18 by 18, but honestly, I don't have time to measure. So it's largely eyeballed based on just the space here. So I go pretty much to the top. Cut. And it goes pretty fast. It's helpful if you're paying attention and not looking at the camera screen to make a straight line. Because <laughs> you want straight line. Eric does a better job at this than I do apparently. Oop. So again, this is a good night before task. Not waste your time your precious morning time when you should be making bouquets, but we'll get these made. Let me show you how I fold it. So I cut our sheets 18 by 18, open it up. I mean, it should be a perfect square. Have it open, flat on the top, 
I'm going to rotate it so I have a point at the top. I'm going to take the bottom point and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to make what looks like two mountain peaks at the top. See my two peaks? Now you can do them wider apart mountain peaks or closer together. But two mountain peaks, flatten, flatten, and then this is your wrap. It's really easy once you get used to the routine. Now if you bought the pre-sheets, you'd have to do this anyway, so you have to fold anyways. This is part of my system over here is where I wrap. So I'll have my stack ready, stack ready, rubber bands ready, staple ready. I choose to do it on this table because this table will stay dry and I just don't want water splotches on the wraps. So this will stay dry. And over here is where I'll arrange and it can get wet from the stems. Now it's time to make bouquets. So I like to put them on the ground. Woo, you hear that? The stupid cheap buckets always breaking. I'm doing things one-handed. My second bucket and my filler. So I have my choices here on the ground. This is my arranging space that's all cleared out. I do what I would call an assembly line style. I think there's two ways you could do an assembly line. You could take all of the flowers of each variety and put them out along your table. And then in your hand, you're making the bouquet and you're picking up from the piles to arrange your bouquet. I used to do it that way. And for me, I found that not as efficient. Couple of the reasons were when you put the flowers in bunches on the table, I felt like they were still very much tangled up. And so I had my left hand filled with the bouquet. My right hand was trying to pull them out. They were getting disconnected. I was having to set the bouquet down, untangle, get the flowers back in, and that was slowing me down. Another thing that was slowing me down is when you do it that way, for me, I understand, you pick your style, but for me, I was losing count in my head of the composition of the bouquet, how many stems I wanted, how many I was using, because my brain was focused on picking the, uh, you know, in the bunch, which, which flower did I like the best, and then arranging it in my hand, and then I was like, oh shoot, what, num what am I on? Am I on six stems or seven, seven stems? Was that the fourth zinnia? Oh, I need to look. No, one, two, three. Oh, no, that was the third zinnia. And I was like constantly recounting in my head and assessing, have I made a $20 bouquet in my hand? So I stopped doing that. Now I do the other assembly line method, which is I'm pre-selecting all the stems in each little bundle on the table, I'm just setting them down in groups. I'll show you how I do this. And then I pick up the bundle and I arrange it that way. And so when I'm arranging, I already know there are 11 stems in this bundle. It's the right combo of filler and focal for my recipe that week. I just need to make it look pretty, get it wrapped up and in a bucket. And that's all that I'm doing. I'm not counting anymore. I'm not making sure I got enough zinnias to enough basil, blah, blah, blah. I've already made the count bundle, now I just need to look pretty, and that has sped me up so much faster to where now I'm at about 25 bouquets an hour doing it that way, and I'm not having to repeat steps, recount, recheck, fuss with stems. I've eliminated a lot of those steps. So for me, that's what I really like, but try out both ways and see maybe you prefer maybe you prefer the other way, because I know the other way is popular, but it just wasn't working out for me. But let me show you how I pre-make these bundles. Now one thing for pre-making the bundles is you need to look at what you have this week and what your recipe can be. Now I don't get too fussed about it being exactly the same because especially for first year flower farmers, year two even, sometimes year three, your production in the field is still not 100% consistent and so you're not getting like the perfect amount harvested to create the exact same bouquet 
for every single one for a hundred bouquets sort of thing. There's going to be variation. You, you yourself might like variation, but the goal is to make a $20 bouquet with whatever sort of thing, rather than like they're all a hundred percent uniform. But you do need to look and see what you have to work with. And so I have marigolds, which would be a focal. I have zinnias, and then I have basil and some celosia, which would be considered filler. For our $20 bouquets, I put, what would my, I put about 11 stems in a bouquet is a $20 bouquet for us. The way I got to that number is we grow primarily focals. We don't grow a lot of filler. Focals cost more, so, and they're bigger, they're bigger blooms. And so 10 to 11 stems of largely blooms, not greenery and filler, does fill out a bouquet. It, they are more expensive, and so you're getting your value. If you have only some zinnias or some sunflowers, but you have a lot of basil, celosia, cosmos, status, like other filler, then you might need to add 13 stems total or 14 to get the $20 value to get the bulk amount so people feel like they're they're truly getting um, what they paid for. So I'm looking here, I think I'm gonna do two basil, one celosia, two marigolds, five zinnias. That's gonna be my recipe with what I have, and I'll show you how I get that all out and ready to arrange for the wrapping. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna start with my basil. And this is, again, how I mentioned, I don't like fussing and fighting with the stems when I have a bouquet in my hand and I can't deal with it one-handed. So I do all of the stem fighting early on. So I'm gonna start first with getting the basil out. Basil loves to get tangled. Okay, got my basil. I said two basil per wrap. So on this table, I can fit about six or so. So that's easy. So I do one, two is in a bundle. And you're making decisions based on size. If it's a weenie stem, maybe do three. If it's a nice branching, that doesn't need three. That's, that is just fine. But like, look, not a bad stem, he is just smaller. And so I'd pick to pair with him a much bulkier friend. So that's four, except I have the camera today. So we've got five, five bundles. Okay, see how I was able to do that? Now I said one celosia, one, two. See how I'm just putting it down? I'm not, I'm not arranging. I'm just setting it down for my count. There's three stems in each one now. Easy. All right, now let's do marigolds. When I came in here this morning, those marigolds had an assassin bug on it. That would have been a bummer start to the day, getting bit by an assassin bug. Okay, I said two marigolds. One thing I think I forgot to mention that's a big time saver when you're harvesting is I'm stripping the leaves in the field, so I'm not having to do it now. So this marigold, you know, unless I, this was the assassin bug one, unless I did my job poorly, this guy's ready to go. Beautiful bloom, leaves are stripped already. I'm not wasting time, this is ready to go. Sometimes I do a little bit of floofing if I see an ugly stem or an ugly leaf, but Okay, now we're doing two. One, two, one, two, one. I'm pulling out quickly. I'm not obsessing. This is a $20 bouquet. This is not, it's not a wedding bouquet. It is not worth my time to obsess for every bloom. Okay, so we've got two basil, one celosia, two marigolds, already out. Now it's time for the zinnias. 
when you get to the colorful focal flowers with a mixed color like zinnias, this is where I get opinionated and other people have different opinions. My customers, you need to know your customers, my customers want just a big, bright, colorful bouquet. They want lots of colors. They want it to catch their eye. They want bright and cheery. My customers are not looking for monochromatic or tonal color palette. They're looking for, you know, they're not coming and looking and being like, well, I wanted a, a butter, buttercream yellow and white and yellow and green accented bouquet. They're just like, give me the biggest flowers you have and the most cheery, colorful, I'm gravitating towards that. So because of that, when I go through the zinnias here, I'm not wasting time on perfectly matching on a color wheel the colors. Now, if you're selling to florists or you're selling in a more upscale market or your bouquets are $40, that might be an element you bring into. I'm moving a lot high quantity $20 market bouquets for moms and husbands who want to come and treat their wife to just a bright colorful arrangement on their kitchen table. We're not getting into like the niche down design work that farmer florists can get into. And so it, you might be wasting time if you are really focused on and acting like you're making a wedding bouquet in its composition and color palette when it's a $20 bouquet. That's not worth your time. It's not worth your time. Now I understand maybe like red and yellow together is just like, no, this looks like a hot dog. I'm not going to do this. Okay, fine. Then like yellows and purples make that distinction, but be serious about the time you're spending thinking about the color palette of your bouquets. And if you're actually seeing that benefit when you interact with customers and weigh that to the time it takes you. So what I tend to do, I have Benary and I have Queen Lime in my bucket. Queen Limes are smaller than Benary's. And so I'll tend to give everyone one or two Queen Limes and then make sure that some have the bigger Benary. So it's not like all smaller Queen Limes or like five of my biggest Benary's that I harvested just in one bouquet. I am trying to spread that out a bit, but again, I'm not, I'm not obsessing. I'm not dwelling too long. Just do it. So five to each. Not arranging, just counting. Right now I'm doing, everyone's getting here from this bunch. Two queen limes. Oop, you got three. Come back. Two queen limes. See how it's just assembly line? Now I'm going to come through here. I'm picking the biggest purples. I harvested a lot of Mondo purples. So that would be good for everyone to get. One, two, three, four, five. Go back that way. I've got more purples. So now we're at four. I've got some pinks. I don't always try to do a perfect color match, but this is just an easy way to balance it. All right. So two basil, one celosia, two marigolds, five zinnias, 10 stems. They look beautiful. And I'll show you the next step. So see how they're all just bunched up. I don't just come in here and scoop and be like, hey, here's your bouquet. Now spend some time, spend some time arranging it. Another opinion with efficiency though of where I'm trying to make this video to be like, these are all the pitfalls for where you might be losing time. Arranging can take forever because you can overthink it and you need to remember you're making a market bouquet and so you're trying to make your flowers look the best from the top down sitting in the wrap you're not arranging a bouquet that's going to live forever more that way with your customer because they're going to come home they're going to rip the paper open they're going to take the rubber band off and they're either going to like bunch it and plunk it in a vase or they themselves are going to try to arrange it and so the time you spend on arranging it should be comparable to what you're getting paid, which is a $20 bouquet. You're not making a vase arrangement that that is what they're buying and it's going to stay that way. So you need to just be looking top down. What does this look like? And for me, I try to just make sure 
the different varieties are spread out nicely 360. So I'll start with my basil. I've got my celosia next to it. I'll pull in a big focal, clean it up if I need to. So as I'm doing this, I'm making sure the, the, the stems that I want seen are all at a similar height on the top because that's the top down that people are gonna be looking at. And then the stems are gonna be different lengths down here and I'll deal with them at the end. But when I'm placing them in my hand, I'm making them even at the top. Okay, so I have this. Now let's bring in a zinnia, a zinnia. Let's get in another filler tucked in there. My marigold's on this side, so let's put this other marigold on this side. Make sure it settles in. I'm rotating. There we go. Come in here. Come in here. Okay. Here it is. How many stems is that? It's 10 stems. Now you can see how they're all different heights, so that's what we have to deal with. But up top, and obviously the wrap is gonna hug them a little tighter, so it's gonna bring them together. But this is it. Basil's on either side, marigolds are on either side, the zinnias are filling out the top. This looks beautiful. This is what they're gonna see. They're gonna say, oh my gosh, look at this bright cherry color. I love this. They're gonna take it home and they're gonna arrange it how they want. And this took me what? You probably timestamp it. 29 seconds to put together. Now, if you love design work and this process is enjoyable to you, great. Not me, but great. But I'm making a $20 market bouquet and my time is part of my profit element. And I'm trying to make 50 bouquets every Saturday morning so I can make a thousand dollars that day. And for $20, I'm not being paid for beautiful, design composition like I would if someone ordered a $50 arrangement in a vase and I do need to spend time fussing with it, working on stem height, working on layout and color palette and all of that because I'm being paid $50. And in that $50, there's a design fee price point. There's not a huge design fee price point built into a $20 bouquet. There's materials, of course, built in and, excuse me, there's, there's labor but there's not so much at that market price point, the floristry element that I think you're actually being properly compensated for. So this works and let me show you how I wrap it. Come over to my table. Oh, I'm out of system, see? Efficiency loss. I've got my snips. They're not even. I tend to pick, let's see if this shows up in the camera. I tend to pick like, for example, see that basil right there? He's kind of at the height that I want the bouquet, and so I'm just gonna cut all the snips to match that basil. So they're close-ish, because I also want them all to be able to properly sit in the water. So now I'm even. Now let me show you my tricky part with the rubber band to make this faster. So tip, so standard rubber band, I don't know. One pound, no, firm strength, one pound bag whatever, they're rubber bands. Most people would put all around the stem, wrote, you know, twist it, go all around. That's a lot of hand strength. I have tiny hands. That's a lot of hand strength. I think it takes time. I think you risk catching a stem and breaking it when you're trying to get all of them included. It's an easier and so much faster way to do it. Take your rubber band, pick a strong stem and hook it, wrap, wrap, Come back up. So strong stem, hook it, wrap it around, hook it back on that stem, and it holds it together. Okay, let's we'll see if I can do this. So got our wrap here. Mountain peaks are at the top. Put our bouquet. I put the blooms sitting right in front of the mountain peak. Uh, so I think maybe this is like a left to right brain sort of thing, we'll see, but I start on the left, I pull it over, just like that. So I had, I wrapped it, 
stapled it, and then I tug it just to, to nestle it up, and then look. Remember how I said you're selling a bouquet based on the top down? Well, the way I've wrapped it is all the blooms sit above the wrap. They're not like lost inside this paper bowl. They're kind of hovering above. So when people come to the stand, they look in the buckets and they look down. They're just seeing a beautiful display of all the flowers they're going to get. They're making the choice based on the flowers they see. And then they're going to come home and take off the wrap and arrange it how they want. And so this is, it's tight. It's nice. It's displayed. It's not using so much extra paper again that it's like hidden inside the wrap. I feel like if you're looking at a bucket and it just looks like a sea of the tops of the wraps and you really have to crane in to see the flowers, your marketing isn't looking as great because people are coming to see flowers. They're not see coming to see a bucket of craft paper. So make it easy, easy to see. I'll put this in my bucket and I have my bundle. So I have four more to make just this way. And these five would probably take me 10 minutes to just arrange, rubber band, staple wrap in the bucket, next. Okay, I just made this one. I counted to 11 seconds of the bundle I pulled. So now I need to deal with it. So I pick my stems, cut them off. Ooh, marigolds are harder to do. They're all the same height. Get my rubber band. Marigold's a great stem to do this because it's super strong. So I slide it up, around, and up. It's wrapped. Get my paper. Paper down, flowers down. I start from the left, pull it up and over, hold it down with my left hand, come back the other side, pull it tight. Done. Start to finish, this probably took me two minutes. On to the next. five bouquets in our steel buckets. We get asked a lot where we got these. Got them at a feed store in town. I think they look beautiful. I can fit five per bucket, which also helps me with counting at the end. If I have eight buckets and five, you can do the math, that sort of thing. They're all fairly uniform, but they're not complete clones, but they're all worth $20. And this bucket probably with timestamp would have taken 10, 10, 10 minutes. So we said when I was harvesting that I estimated about 10 bouquets. I have made eight. I've got two more here, 10, and then I probably have three more there. So 13. So three buckets made 13 bouquets. Um, Close-ish to what I'm estimating, but I hope this video is helpful in showing you how we make a lot of market bouquets really fast. And the keys are efficiency in your harvesting system, having your space all laid out with all of your supplies in a logical order so you're not like a Roomba, just like randomly pinging across your space, but you're logically going down in order, you have your supplies ready. And then the most important part is you're not wasting a ton of time thinking about which particular stem to put in, the color composition, fussing a long time in the arranging. You're making a $20 market bouquet. You, they, you are not being paid for florist design work. You're trying to move a lot of stems to people. They can take it home and arrange it in their vase how they want. And they are looking for bright, cheery color. The way I put them in the wrap is they float above, like I told you, so you're not just seeing a sea of craft paper, but people are looking down into the bucket Flowers are popping out to them and they're saying, oh my gosh, I love this fuchsia color. I want this one. Grab it out, $20 in your pocket. 
moving on. So that should help speed up your efficiency. If you're making 10 or 15 bouquets and it's taking you four hours, implement some of these processes and get faster, sell more bouquets and make more money. In future videos, we will do a marketing video on how I get people to come to our stand to buy 50 bouquets, because that's the next step. You can make them, but they don't necessarily always come. So we'll do future videos about that. But hopefully, from an efficiency standpoint, this really speeds you up and you start making more money on less time.